thanks to its obstruction-free optical design. A refractor telescope is in theory capable of delivering exceptional image quality. But in order to do so, it needs to first overcome two major hurdles, chromatic and spherical aberrations. In today's video, we are going to see if the new 71F quadruplet refractor from ASCAR is capable of overcoming these hurdles to become one of the best options in the sub 1000 bucks price category. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to another video review. Ascar is a brand of Jiaxin Sharp Star Optical Instrument, a well respected Chinese OEM for mid and high end astronomical telescopes and accessories. Some of their more popular lineups of telescopes include the 2ED Element Quadruplet PHQ series and the Triplet Apo series with 1ED Element. In order to bridge the gap between these, Sharpstar recently announced the ASCAR 71F, a quadruplet reflector telescope with a single ED element, promising excellent color correction and thanks to a built-in flattener element, a very flat field of view as well. So when they got in touch with me and asked if I wanted to put it to the test, I gratefully said yes. Here I also want to mention that while they did provide the telescope for the purpose of this review, it won't color my opinion about it. With this out of the way, let's see what's inside the box. The telescope arrived in this unassuming cardboard box. Inside we find the OTA surrounded by a thick layer of foam and a metal photographic or camera adapter composed of multiple detachable extension rings. With this adapter you can attach the camera directly to the draw tube of the focuser. This adapter might be required if you want to use a camera with a large sensor and need to take advantage of the full width of the draw tube. Besides this, there is also an 8mm and a 20mm puzzle eyepiece and a 45 degree erecting prism diagonal as well as some paperwork including a quality control certificate and the telescope's physical specifications. Looking at the OTA first, we see an all metal build painted white with some blue accents for the optical tube and an anodized black focuser assembly at the back. The tube rings and the dovetail bar are black as well. The objective at the front is protected by a retractable dew shield and a metal dust cap, both of which are also padded on the inside to avoid scratches. The dew shield also has a thumb screw for fixing it in place, which is a nice touch. The optical tube is held in place by two padded tube rings, connected at the bottom and at the top. At the top there is a mounting bracket with threaded holes on the sides that also functions as a convenient handlebar. On the other side of the tube rings we find a 23cm long dovetail bar with a couple of threaded holes for attaching it to a regular camera tripod. This dovetail bar can slide forward and backward by 7.5cm to allow for a high flexibility when trying to balance out the OTA on the mount. Moving at the back of the OTA we find a very nice focuser assembly. This is a 2.5 inch dual speed rack and pinion focuser with slanted teeth which allows for very smooth and precise adjustments. The draw tube features markings both for length and for degrees of rotation which is very nice since this helps a lot to keep constant values during setups. Even though the end of the draw tube can be rotated by 360 degrees, the focuser assembly with the draw tube itself and the focusing gears can't, like on the SV543 from Sfiboni for example. This I find to be a bit of a missed opportunity, it would have been nice to have this flexibility as well. Another odd thing is that with the dovetail pushed all the way to the front, 
there is barely room for the screw that secures the draw tube in place. This totally contradicts the added flexibility of the long and adjustable dovetail bar. But other than this, the focuser assembly is excellent. It's very well built and easy to use. Also one, a nice touch are the two finder scope shoes included with the OTA. This way you can attach an optical finder, a guiding camera and an ASI airbox, for example, to the OTA. The whole OTA is 37 cm long with the dew shield collapsed and including the one and a quarter inch adapter, making it a very compact refractor telescope. Because of its weight of 3 kg, including the tube rings and dovetail bar, the 71F is on the heavier side for such a small telescope. But this is thanks to all the nice glass inside. Nevertheless, you should keep in mind this aspect if you intend on pairing it with a lightweight mount or a camera tripod. Overall, the build quality of the OTA and the materials used are excellent. There is no doubt that this is a well thought out premium telescope. By contrast, the included accessories are nothing worth writing home about. The two Plusl eyepieces are ok. They are capable of delivering decently bright and contrast rich views with good on center sharpness. If you plan on doing more than casual visual observations with this telescope, I would recommend upgrading the eyepieces to better ones in the long run. The included 45 degrees prism is actually pretty decent and doesn't represent a bottleneck for the optical system, which is very nice. Alright, so the 71F is shaping up to be an excellent little refractor telescope. But how is the optical performance? Let's start with visual observations first. I've tested this telescope over the past month on nights with good seeing conditions from my backyard under Bortle 4 skies. To eliminate any bottlenecks, I paired it with a quality 1.25 inch prism diagonal from Bader Planetarium and as eyepieces go, with the 9mm delight from Teleview and the SV215 zoom eyepiece from Sfiboni. Right from the get-go, I was greeted by some really nice crisp views of the moon. Contrast and sharpness are excellent, allowing for very fine details to be visible like the shadows just below the rims of the craters on the terminator line. The edge of the moon to the space is a high contrast situation, one that can easily overwhelm the optical system of lesser refractors, resulting in chromatic abrasions. But here the 71F managed to master such situations without hiccups, resulting in views with no color distortion whatsoever. If there is any color fringing, then it's not visible to the naked eye. As Saturn starts to become visible in the early morning hours, I wanted to test if the 71F could make a decent planetary telescope as well, and it clearly can. Even if the maximum theoretical magnification is only 140x, it's enough to enjoy the beautiful ringed planet even if right now it sits very low on the horizon and only becomes visible shortly before the sun comes up. So while the 71F is a small telescope, it is definitely a capable instrument for low and medium power visual observations. But its main intended purpose is astrophotography which is why I also did some extensive testing here as well. So let's see how it performed. For these tests, I paired it with my on-step powered EQ5 mount and the SV705C color camera from Sfiboni. A flattener wasn't necessary since the 71F already has one built in as a fourth lens element at the back of the optical tube. Additionally, I added an UV IR cut filter as well to improve the final result even more. For this test, I decided to capture the NGC 7000, also known as the North America Nebula. Capturing was planned and executed in Nina, while post-processing was done with Deep Sky Stacker and GIMP. 
After a couple of test shots, I dialed in the following settings for the main test, 150 lights and 30 darks, with an exposure time of 30 seconds and a gain value of 200. Out of the 75 minutes of total exposure, I've ended up using only 60 minutes. Now I'm going to start with the image as it basically came out after stacking, before I did too much post-processing on it, as I want to first show you the raw performance of the 71F in terms of sharpness, chromatic aberrations and the flatness of the field of view. Here is the image and if we zoom in a bit, we can see the stars appear as sharp and round points of light, which is great. Even looking over at the corners, we can see that the stars appear as sharp and round circles. If you nail the focus, then you can be sure that the 71F can deliver sharp images across the entire field of view. Here it's important to note that the sensor size of the SV705C I used to take this picture is only 11.2 by 6.3 mm big. A bigger full frame sensor might reveal areas around the edges that aren't perfectly sharp like the rest of the field of view. I will test this in a future video once I get my hands on an appropriate camera. Another aspect to look at is chromatic aberrations. The lack of color fringing I saw during my visual tests gets confirmed here when looking at this image. If we zoom in on some of the brighter stars, we can see that there is only very little color shift, bottom right versus top left, but this is really nothing worth mentioning. The 71F with its four lens element design manages to correct the incoming light very well, allowing for nice accurate colors even in high contrast situations. After stretching the image to bring out the colors and more details of the nebula, the final result looks like this. For one hour worth of exposure, I believe the 71F was able to gather a great deal of light information. A longer exposure time would definitely yield more details and a less grainy image. What Sharpstar managed to do here with the Ascar 71F is very interesting. When I first got the telescope, I wasn't very impressed with it. At first glance, I thought that while it's nicely built, its aperture is too small for it to be able to deliver great views and images of the night sky. And boy, I was wrong. Surely, there are some minor aspects that can be improved, especially with respect to the focuser assembly. But overall, the 71F is a great little refractor telescope, one that is capable of delivering an excellent optical performance both for visual and astrophotography applications. Especially with respect to the latter, when paired with a good camera and a stable go-to mount, the 71F can yield spectacular images of the night sky and as far as I can assess, its only real limitation is the skill of the one who's using it. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the 71F. Do you agree with me or do you have a different opinion? I'm very interested in reading your comments below. And while you're at it, also get subscribed if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.